St Mary's is, is one of the most extraordinary places. It's located in the heart of Times Square, 46th Street and Broadway. And it was, of course, built before Times Square, before the Rockefeller Center buildings were a twinkle in the, the city's eyes. Inside the church, it's extremely beautiful. It's modeled on the, the French Saint Chapelle in Paris. The nickname of the church is Smoky Mary's, hence the incense, this copious incense that we use. So it smells beautiful, it looks beautiful. When you step outside into the hustle and bustle of Times Square, the hot dog stalls, the tourists with their cameras standing still when you just want to walk past them with your, your grocery shopping, it's, it's a real mishmash, a complete and utter contrast. It's as if, I'm not going to say heaven and hell, but it sometimes feels like that. I suppose when I was about seven, eight, nine, I would doodle on the piano we had at home and make things up and entertain the family with songs I'd invented, but I'd had no formal training. And then around that time, I became a chorister at my local cathedral. So I did that like a fish to water, duck to water, absolutely loved it, um, and jumped in at the deep end. And, and so my experience of music and of church and of religion was all, all happened at the same time. So for me, music making is always uh, a religious experience, certainly a spiritual experience, whether it's in the concert hall, whether it's in the church, it's, it's really hard to separate. The experience of being a boy chorister gave me everything that, that I know nowadays. We had rehearsals every morning, service every evening, and maybe one or two days off a week. So the idea of, of practicing and performing as a part of a creative process was instilled from a very young age. If I were to be a lawyer or a doctor, my experience as a, as a chorister would absolutely inform all of that stuff. The path of the pipe organ involved me as a young, distracted, high energy chorister, I guess. The organ was located right behind the choir stalls. And so, not to the, to the chagrin of my music director, I would often turn around and, and watch the organist during the service. And obviously I would miss an entry and he would say, you know, James, you missed the Kenley, you missed the entry there. Um, but I was just fascinated by what this guy was doing behind. I loved the sounds, but also the mechanics. I'm fortunate enough to have housing in the church building here and it was originally designed for three priests that live there and so that's where I have my apartment, it's on the fifth floor um, but when you get to the top you're rewarded, it's this little oasis away from Times Square. Yes, Emily is my girlfriend and she's wonderful, she's um, a wonderful singer, coloratura soprano and she also works at Juilliard. Yes, yes. To my favourite organist. <laughs> Uh, Cheers! In the, whole land. the best thing, the, the, the quirk as it were, there's this amazing patio um, which is I suppose the, about 40 by 50 feet and it's this vast it's just, it's just rooftop sound, so um, which is accessible from, from the door from my apartment so now it's this, this haven away from the hustle and bustle of Times Square. My coming about applying for the Longwood competition is, I guess, one of the more strange stories that, that um, people will give, because I hadn't heard of the competition. Um, I'd heard of the, of the organ, I've heard of the space and the, the wonderful gardens, but I hadn't heard of this competition. I guess partly because it was the first competition of its type there. But in the lead up to the application deadline, a number of colleagues and friends called me up and said, could I come and record at St. Mary's? Many of them played the same pieces, and I thought, oh, well, they must be playing for the same thing and I said to one of my friends, what, what, what are you going in for? And he said, oh, it's the Longwood Gardens organ competition. I thought, Longwood Gardens organ competition. So the, the world wide web being what it is, um, the interwebs as my grandmother calls it, I went on to Google and, and lo and behold, the Longwood Gardens first international organ competition. I thought, ooh, this, this looks cool.
We do not do the careers as organists, as musicians, certainly not as church organists, for the remuneration. We do it for love and for passion. So that's why having the support of prize money, for example, is, is, a, is a real thing, it's an important thing, because it means that one can pursue further study, fund a recording, fund an overseas um, tour, broadcast season. I know a number of the finalists. I've had a chance to hear their playing, and I in a way know what I'm up against, which is exceptional musicality and really, really, really good playing. So it's exciting. It means that the competition is going to be fierce, and I think the judges are going to have to work hard. Winning the Longwood competition would be extraordinary. I suppose the aspiration of most organist church musicians is to have a career as a concert organist, and that really comes with accolades recording CDs, gaining fame, notoriety, winning competitions. Competitions are really the big stepping stone um, jump into the concertizing world. Mm -hmm.